and black bright and I'm sorry I got cut off you're probably relieved I got cut off because I just realized I was going on for 18 minutes anyway I just wanted to round it off um, this is part two of the Tiger Woods um, situation where he's being sued by the parents of Nicholas Immersberger who was driving while intoxicated and died um, what the parents are claiming is that Tiger Woods and his girlfriend knew that he was attended Alcoholics Anonymous. They knew that he couldn't hold his drink and, and they plied him with drinks and after the shift and he ended up driving home and he died. I, I in the first, I'm not going to go over everything, but in the first video I queried how long he'd been a um, bartender for um, and because that's relevant, was he able to do the job without drinking? Um, I'm sure that if he was a visible drunk or if he was somebody who couldn't control his drink, he wouldn't have had a job behind the bar where there's customers. But there again, we don't know. We don't know how people present themselves when they're drunk, whether or not they can contain themselves and look quite sober. And if that's the case, how would Tiger Woods know where, how drunk he was? Um, the situation is Erica um, Herman, who's a girlfriend, apparently she's been pulled in because she's the one that employed him, knowing that he was an alcoholic. My point is, is if, the, if the parents knew that he had a job as a bartender, why did they not say to their son, listen, I don't want you to work there? But obviously, he's working for a celebrity. You know, it's always the way. When everything is good, you know, people jump on the bandwagon. When it, when the, when the shit hits the fan, then all of a sudden, you know, everybody's a bad guy. But my point is, is that she, the, as a responsible parents, they should have gone to Tiger Woods' shop and said, "Listen, he's got a problem with drink. I don't know if you know this, but I'm letting you know he has a problem with drink. He should not be a bartender." Anyway, putting all of that aside. Um, this 24 year old died may he rest in peace um, but their parents are trying to use first first um, oh I must get it mixed up first first party um, dram shop liability on Tiger Woods when it should be third party no, they're trying to use third party um, dram shop law when it should be first party. Um, just a quick summary of what first party cases are is a first party dram shop case occurs when the person who's consumed too much alcohol prosecutes the bartender or establishment that serve them to receive compensation for injuries or damage that they have created while under the influence of alcohol. OK, so that's the first party. But because he's dead, he can't do that. Um, and that this, the first party cases also applies to driving while under the influence. Like I said, I'm not going to go through um, all of what I've said in the first one. Now, a third party dram shop, which is what the parents are using against um, Tiger Woods, his girlfriend and the... Um, restaurant is the case occurs when an intoxicated person causes injury or damage to some other person or other party okay which he hasn't done he's he's killed himself by driving while intoxicated for instance a person who is drinking in a bar visibly intoxicated and impaired continues to receive alcohol they then later attempt to drive home and get into an accident. As a result of the accident, the intoxicated person injures some other individual, the third party, and then that person sues for damages. Now, if Nicholas Immersberger had gone out and knocked somebody over, then that would have been different. Then they could have applied third party dram shop case law. But that's not the case. Um, the, the state's that allow third party dram shop cases typically have stipulations on what the third party must prove in court to successfully sue the bartender or establishment. Different states have different standards of evidence that they must be achieved, but in general, the third party must prove that the bartender or establishment sold or gave alcohol to the person, 
demonstrate some relationship between the person's level of intoxication and their use of the alcohol that was sold or given to them, provide evidence of recklessness on the part of the bartender or establishment such that they intentionally served alcohol to a person who was visibly intoxicated and disregarded obvious signs that serving alcohol to the person could potentially cause damage or harm to others. Prove that the bartender or establishment knowingly served alcohol to an individual who was addicted to alcohol and or drugs. Demonstrate that the act of serving alcohol to the individual was intentional. Now, what I'm saying is that the parents, and if you read all the media and all the newspapers, what they're saying, they're using third party dram shop law. When um, it doesn't apply. It doesn't apply. So I hope he should have a good lawyer. It's going to probably cost him an arm and a leg. Um, it does say, um, and you know why they're not using first party? I did say this in the first one, but I'm just going to sum it up. First party dram shop cases are also very hard to prosecute and win. It's tough to convince a jury that they should give an adult a financial settlement because they consumed too much alcohol and caused an injury or damage as a result of their own actions. So there you have it. Um, I'm sorry it went on for so long. I hope it's interesting and not too boring. But yeah, I'm going to end it there. And that's all for now. This is Black Bright signing out.